Today, we will be breaking down a successful lemon law case against Ford. In particular, we will be talking about a 2020 F-150 Raptor. We'll break down what exactly does successful even mean and in hopes that you can apply these exact philosophies in your own case, whether it's for a Ford or other newer vehicle. My name is Sina Resvanpour. Not only am I a huge car fan, but I happen to be a lemon lawyer who loves making content. So if you are interested in learning more about lemon law, learning more about how to think like a lawyer and learning more about automotive legal advice, make sure to click that bell so that you can get notified when new content drops and make sure to subscribe for more. Before we dive into the car that is the subject of the video, let's talk about our client in this particular case. We happen to be friends. I know him personally, super nice guy. He falls into one of our standard three categories that we feel like most of our clients fall into. To really quickly break down these three categories, I would describe the first as EV drivers or people who are otherwise very interested in the cutting edge technology that vehicles have to offer. The second category involves people who have families, people who care a lot about safety, people who wanna just make sure that they can get from point A to point B safely. The third category category are car enthusiasts. You don't have to have a crazy high performance car to fall into this category. You may just love cars and you want to make sure that you're getting what you pay for because you probably put a lot of thought into the car that you chose. I would put our client in this situation in this third category. He has a F-150 Raptor, not just any F-150, but a Raptor. So he not only wants to be able to use this truck like a truck is meant to be used, but he wants to do so in style. He wants to have some fun while he's doing that. Leave a comment to let me know which type of car owner do you think you are? Do you care most about safety? Do you care about performance? Now let's talk about the issues that plague this F-150. They really fall into two categories. One are electrical problems, which mainly affected the infotainment system in the screen. The second are transmission related issues. Both of these types of issues are incredibly common with the F-150. Part of the research that we do as Lemon Lawyers is to find out the complaints that we're hearing from our client. Are they specific to this car only, or are they part of a broader set of complaints that are experienced by people who have F-150 150s in general. So we can find out more information about this by not only searching online, doing a simple Google search to see what are the Ford forums talking about, what are other consumers talking about, but we can also look at the NHTSA website. The NHTSA stands for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. This is the government entity that helps implement recalls and other safety issues related to vehicles. By visiting the NHTSA website, you can type in the year, make, and model of your vehicle, and you can find out a ton of information. In this particular case, we see the 2020 Ford F-150 Super Crew has eight recalls, one investigation, and 272 reported complaints. These complaints can tell us a lot of the common issues with this vehicle. As we can see down here, 44 of the complaints are relating to the electrical system and 74 are related to the powertrain. Exactly the issues that our client experienced in this particular case. Let's talk a little bit about how our client found us in this particular situation. Of course, we knew each other personally, but he happened to get an advertisement in the mail telling him that he should look into the lemon law for his particular vehicle. And he asked me if I knew anything about this or if there was any substance to the claims that were being made in the letter. After taking a look at it, I started a conversation with him and I asked him, have you had any problems with your truck? Have you taken it in for repair? It turns out that he did have some problems early on and now he was on the tail end of his warranty. And I asked him, do you still have problems today? He said, yes. So I encouraged him to make sure that he gets the problems fixed while his warranty still existed or else he would be paying for this out of pocket. So he did just that. He made an appointment and he took his truck back in for repair to address the transmission issues that were still plaguing the car. The dealership ended up taking their sweet time completing the repairs. After driving his truck a couple weeks and for about 500 miles, he realized that the transmission was still kicking. So he brought the vehicle in again. They verified his problems again and they made another repair attempt. Following this last repair, he shared with us all of his repair orders, which are really the main evidence in any case. After taking a look at everything that he shared, we knew that we had enough repairs to have a successful case. So what did we do? We filed his case. We served the manufacturer, Ford Motor Company, within 30 days. Ford got back to us and they offered him a buyback. That is the remedy that the lemon law says you are entitled to if you have a lemon. If you have had any experience in any aspect of the law, you know that nothing happens overnight. So it was actually quite surprising to our client, at least that he got this news so quickly. Ford happens to be one of the few manufacturers that has a early resolution department. That means that newly filed cases are reviewed by a specific law firm that Ford hires with the sole intent of seeing, is this a quality case? Is this a case that should be settled? And if so, let's make an immediate repurchase offer. Why would they do this? That's because Ford has to pay our client's attorney's fees, essentially our attorney's fees. So the sooner they're able to settle a case, the less they have to pay in attorney's fees, which 
makes us happy, makes our client happy. Ford, I'm sure, is not thrilled to pay attorney's fees at all, but the less they pay, the happier they are. Ford told us they're gonna buy back this vehicle, but we don't know right on the spot how much they're gonna buy the vehicle back for. We then need to do a repurchase calculation. Remember, a repurchase does not have anything to do with the fair market value of the car today. It has to do with a refund of the money that was spent on the car. There are some deductions that a manufacturer may legitimately be able to take on a case. Most commonly, we see mileage deductions. The mileage deduction is not based off of your current mileage. It's rather based on the mileage that the vehicle had at the first time you bought it in for repair for the main issue with the vehicle. In this case, our client brought his vehicle in within the first couple months of ownership. So he is getting back close to 100% of his money. Again, he pays us nothing in attorney's fees and Ford has to pay off the loan on his vehicle as well. Now let's talk about my favorite part of any case. I got to make the phone call to our client to let him know this good news. It's always a little bit sweeter when I actually have a personal connection with our client. So I got to talk with our client. I told him very quickly after I was filing the case, the offer to buy back and he asked me what that actually meant. I broke down to him that we estimate that he'll be getting back close to 100% of his money. He basically thought that I was messing with him. He thought that there was some catch that he just wasn't understanding. He asked me to explain it to him a second and the third time. I got to tell him that no, there was, this was not BS. We were not pulling his leg. This is a legitimate offer. We have an email. I forwarded him the email so that he could see it for himself. He was beyond himself. You really get to share in these wins with your client. Sure, it means that we're getting paid as well, which is always nice, but to see how this could change someone's life, how it could remove a problem vehicle out of someone's life and give them a fair shot at getting into a new vehicle that's safer and is exciting to them. That's really something that's really special about our practice and probably my favorite single thing that I do on a daily basis. So what comes next? Next up, Ford will prepare a itemized calculation of the repurchase offer. I know I gave an estimate to our client already, but we get to verify those numbers, make sure everything looks legit. We then work that into a settlement agreement. Our client will sign the settlement agreement and so will Ford. And then we wait for the settlement funds to be processed. Our client will retain the vehicle and they'll keep making any payments that are due on the car until Ford tells them your check is ready. At that point, he will basically do something that's quite similar to a lease surrender. He will show up at a dealership, he will present the vehicle there, and in exchange, he will get the settlement check. Shortly thereafter, Ford will also pay off the loan on the vehicle and any payments that our client made after signing the settlement agreement, but before returning his vehicle will also be refunded to him by the bank. And that is a basic breakdown of a very successful Lemon Law case against Ford. I think there's a few takeaways here. Number one, it is good to listen to your attorney's advice. We have seen thousands and thousands of cases. We know what cases look like that will be approved by the manufacturer. So sometimes we're able to give input on, hey, if you still have problems, why don't you get a repair before actually beginning a case? And those kinds of things, if they're done correctly, can really help to move a case much faster as we saw in this particular case and have a significantly higher chance of success. Another takeaway here is do not underestimate your lemon law rights. You have, especially in California, very strong lemon law rights. The same is true in many other states throughout the nation. You may be sleeping on a case that is quite valuable to you and will allow you to get out of an unsafe vehicle and into something safe and exciting. Third takeaway is that we should really appreciate when manufacturers move quickly. Many other manufacturers will really drag their feet. This is meant as a defense tactic. This is meant to wear on you as a plaintiff so that you will accept less than what you are reasonably and fairly entitled to. And the last couple takeaways are if you still have issues and you still have a warranty, make sure to take your car in for repair. Your warranty will not last forever. And last but not least, it is never too early to consult with an attorney. We are happy to give an absolutely free consultation and give you advice that may help make a big difference in your potential case. If you have any questions at all, make sure to drop them in the comment section below and I will be happy to cover them in a future video. My name is Sina Resvampur and thank you for watching.